Hey everyone, and welcome to the YouTube channel. Um, today I wanted to give you a bit of a, a bio history about myself. I was thinking the other day, um, you know, why I'm doing all these nice videos and what, why would people listen to, to what I'm saying and um, uh, why, why would they take advice from, from me? Some, to some people they're probably, and I'm a stranger. Um, so I thought I would just give you a little bit of a, my life in uh, history in sport just so you can um, just know a little bit more about me, really, and then hopefully sort of um, give you a bit more bit more backing as to some of the advice and some of the videos I'm doing. So, and then I thought, how am I going to do this? I thought, well, we'll just start at the beginning. So, born and bred here in Hertfordshire, um, went to a local school till I was uh, 13. I played a lot of sport there, played a lot of rugby in the winter and athletics in the summer. I've um, got my school colours there and won a few other awards as well. I was pretty good at sort of all-rounders, 100, 100 metre sprints, javelin. Um, I got into 1,500 metres, actually. That was a, that was a good event for me. Um, then I went off to when I was 13, I went off to boarding school, um, all the way through to my A-levels. Again, played lots of sport. Um, academically, I got better. I will admit I did struggle a lot with um, dyslexia and, uh, and just preferring sport over over academics. Um, again, I was playing lots of rugby there, played uh, for a lot of the, all the first teams for every year, all the way through to the sixth form, got my school colours. Um, I was doing a lot of athletics in the summer as well. Um, and then lucky for me, sort of in the, in the sixth form, uh, so the last two years, I persuaded them to start up a, a cycle club as well, so I could, uh, I could cycle in the summer as my sport, which is good. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me race, um, so my racing career didn't start till well after my A levels, um, but then I did I did start cycling when I was about about thirteen, um, mainly because uh, of my dad. Uh, dad used to race for South End Wheelers when he was younger, just just testing time trials, specialising at twenty five miles. Um, so you know he had a bit of interest in it. He was doing a charity event um, with his company, uh, London to Cambridge. So I did that with him, he was like training, did the event, I carried on training, really got into it. My cousin was into cycling as well, he's a few years older than me, and he took me off to go and ride with the Bishop's Dortford CC. So that was the first club I ever joined when I was about 13, rode with them for years, um, and really, really good, and I, and I thank all of those guys there, they, were, they, they taught me everything about riding on the road, road craft, riding in bunches, you know, the do's and don'ts of of cycling and um, and I think that stood me in good stead um, to this day. Um, so yeah, a little bit. If it's, I've grown up in a, my family are very very sports orientated. So um, again, dad used to be a ski instructor back in Austria back in the day, and that's how we met my mum. So we all grew up skiing. I got taught how to ski when I was two years old, and we skied every winter. So actually, through school, although I was doing a bit of cycling and, and pretty good at rugby, um, all I wanted to do was finish my A levels and then go to the French Alps and go do a ski season. Um, so I've got to thank Dad for, for my skiing and my cycling, which is brilliant. Uh, my mum's a handy skier as well. Don't put her down, she's a good skier. Um, and then, so yeah, that was it, finished my A-levels, got my three A-levels. Three A -levels. Um, yeah, then uh, had a summer here and then packed, my, packed the car and went off to the French Alps, got a job in a hotel over there. Did the whole winter there, came back, um, cycled through the summer just for fitness. Um, I did have a crack at uh, Loughborough University. I got good grades, good enough grades to get me into the university. Um, but it was the same kind of thing. The sports was fantastic. I was playing first team freshers uh, and first un first team under 21s, under 23s for the university. Um, sports side of things was going really, really well. The academic side of things was, was not so good. I was failing half the classes. So, um, you know, you, you can't get through university without the, uh, the academic side of it. So... Um, so I pulled out of there, and then oh, I went back to skiing. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to ski. So, um, so yeah, back to back to France for the winters, and then cycling in the summer, um, summers, mainly just for fitness. Um, I just loved it, and I'd stay out there for a few weeks at the end of the winter and ride around the Alps, do out the Galibier, um, Alpe d'Huez, Isward, um, ride down to Gap, things like that, and then come back and I. Mate over here that I was training with in the summer back here in the UK. He um, he said I want you to come and do a local race. So I went and did um, a Tuesday night round at Northfield Airfield. I think I got seventh. Uh, that was the first race I ever did. 
loved it and it just snowballed from there just you know just really really got into it started doing road races circuit races um and i would do that all summer um but just for fun really and then knowing it was for fitness for skiing go back to france for the winter um and then just come back and forth and i kept doing that for for quite a few years did do a few race ski races um nothing to shout about though um probably the biggest race i did was a free ride comp in, in slovakia I got through to the top, to the super final, um, and got a te- te- top 10 placing, but you know, that, I didn't do many comps. Um, the cycling in the summer was, was, was where it was at. Um, I think I did finish my last season, winter 2006, 2007, came back to the UK, got a proper job here, working for a ski company as a salesman, um, and then the racing uh, went on from there. Raced in Bishop Bitch- Talk for Colours for, for a number of years. Um, and then as the racing got better, actually, I, I decided I needed to move to a, another team or club that was more race orientated, better support, um, other people to race with, uh, better advice, a um, little bit of help with uh, some kit and some race entry. So then I moved to Finchley uh, Race Team, North London, and um, brilliant team, really good level of rider, some quality bike riders to, to train with, uh, get loads of advice from. And my riding really progressed a lot from there. Um, helped them win the Eastern Road Race League um, one year, which was great. Um, moved on from there, did a couple of years with them. Then I moved on and got a, a ride with what was called Metal Tech Scott at the time. It's now Metal Tech Kyoto. So a uh, big thank you to Andy Swain for giving me that ride. That was an amazing year. Um, really tough racing. We did the Elite Crit Series and the Elite Road Series, what was the Premier Calendar. Um, really tough racing, but um, I did love it, you know. And I even broke my collarbone um, early in the season and still bounced back and, um, and got some good results for those guys. Loved racing the whole team ethos and how professional it was, so um, learned a lot from those guys as well, which was really good. Um, actually, they went back to Finchley for a year um, to race with those guys, where I won the uh, Eastern Regional Championships for the first time. Um, which I'm really pleased about and then went on to go and win the Masters Tour in Mallorca that year as well um, got a few other half decent results following year then started riding for uh, Andy Lyons team um, which is called Rich- Richardson's Trek and they're still around and again thank you to Andy Lyons for, for giving me a ride there really professional team, really nice guy he was really really helpful um, really well run team, some good riders and I wish those guys all, all the best for the future because they're still going. They've got some some uh, some really good young riders in there, so look out for them. Um, yeah, and I you know won a f- uh, handful of races there. One of them being I went back and uh, defended my title at the uh, regional championships. So um, really pleased with that. Uh, went back to Mallorca, nearly got um, the win again in the, the Masters Tour over there. Had to settle for second um, on countback, which was close. Um, but again, just you know, just loved it. Really professional, really good level of racing. Ra- race for them for two years. Um, nearly got the regional championships for the third year in a row. I got, I got third. At least I got on the podium. But my teammate won it. So, you know, again, it was, a, it was a great race. Um, so yeah, my career, my cycling career, just had a little count up. I had over 130 top 10 finishes um, in that in that span of, of road racing. So, really consistent. Um, did really well with time trials as well, and uh, a couple of course records, a lot of PBs throughout the years, and did work track as well. I've won uh, medals at the uh, National Team Pursuit, silver, Masters, Scratch Race, bronze. Um, so you can probably see a couple of them hanging up behind me. So um, really good all rounder, and had a really good career uh, through cycling and learnt a lot, which was good. Uh, 2015 I got sanctioned with a a four year drug ban uh, for an adverse analytical finding Um, long and short of it it's a a a positive test for a banned substance so I'm currently serving that I've just got over a year left on that Um, so you know the the racing stopped but you know the training didn't I still have a passion for riding my bike um, so I kept that going but um, what that did was, it, generally it's, it's, not, it's not a good situation, but 
you try and make a, the best out of the situation as you can. And actually what it did is open up a lot of other doors for me to explore other things away from cycling. So um, I've worked in the bike trade before uh, for, for many years, all through, all through this as well. And I actually changed jobs to work for another bike manufacturer. And at the same time, I then started working for Reflex Nutrition, who I'd been sponsored with for most of this time. And I got to work really closely with a, with a leading supplement brand and um, and just you know just and, and learn more about a passion that I had you know uh, sports nutrition um, and then put that into practice and uh, and make some money from it so that was really good um, and also with that I then uh, had the opportunity to go onto a TV show SAS Who Dares Wins on Channel Four um, and we got flown out to Ecuador for two weeks to go and um, do a condensed version of an SAS selection in the jungle and. Um, it was amazing. It was an, a, a, an unbelievable experience. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it on 4, 4OD. Um, it, w- it is really, really cool. Met some incredible people, did some incredible things. Um, and I probably wouldn't have had that experience if I was still racing, just because you know, I wouldn't have applied for it and I wouldn't have had the time for it. So uh, I stayed in touch with um, a couple of the SAS lads um, and do some uh, work with them back here with, with their company called Breakpoint. So um, thank you, Ollie. Thank you, Foxy. It's been, um, it's been an amazing, what was it, about 18 months with those guys and still working with them. So loving it. You know, I've got a nice mix of um, some SAS experiences and still doing a lot of cycling um, and still skiing in the winter as well. Um, so that's how it sort of brings us up to, up to today. Um, as you can see, it's just, you know, life has been revolved around sports. Um, it is just a huge passion. The two big ones for me are uh, cycling and skiing. Um, you know, and if I can make a lifestyle out of it, um, I will do, and that's what I'm going for. So why would you, why would you listen to me and take advice from me? Um, no, at the moment I don't have any qualifications in all of this, but I am in the process of it. So I will get a coaching qualification, I'll have a personal training qualification, and I will have a sports nutrition qualification. So that just cements everything that I've learned over the years and, uh, and actually has nice pieces of paper to say that I that backs up that I know what I'm talking about. But um, Hopefully you can see that I've just had years and years of experience in different sports and competing at a, a very high level. And more importantly, actually, is training with the right people. So um, cycling-wise, I've been coached by, um, in my opinion, one of the best coaches out there who worked for the national squad, the GB squad, um, and also raced at world championship level himself. Um, and, you know, he's so knowledgeable about everything and knowledgeable. And, um, and I just loved listening to him, working with him following the routine, understanding what we're doing and, and everything to, to get the best out of me and, um, and how he can make me a better, a better racer and a better bike rider. Um, so that was interesting. And then previous to that, I've done a lot of uh, gym work and things for years with uh, bodybuilders, ex-bodybuilders, competing bodybuilders, uh, some people that have um, tra- uh, competed internationally. Um, and the same with dietitians, guys that have um, done diets for Olympic athletes and other competing athletes around the world um, and just because it's a passion for me listening to what they've got to say and just asking so many questions whilst you're actually training with them or just sitting there talking and trying to absorb all the information I did I just remembered everything and you know, I even wrote a lot of it down workouts and diets and, um, and you know and I've been there and I've tried it um, I tried all the workouts I tried all the diets um, read all about it um, put it all into practice to see what works, what doesn't work, and um, and ju- just because I was just enjoying it, found the whole thing so interesting, um, and still do to this day, still reading reports and um, reviews and findings and stuff about different foods and different training uh, routines and things like that. So um, it's just a years and years and years of experience and research and working with with top class coaches and athletes to build up the knowledge that I've got. So then once I've got the qualification, that sort of looks to me that, you know, it sort of gives me the, the complete package. So um, when I'm giving advice to you guys or doing videos like this, um, it's got a bit of backing and a bit of clout to it. So um, it sort of means something. So hopefully that sort of explains a little bit, and it's a bit of a condensed, bit quick, but it sort of explains a bit more about who I am, what I've done, and, um, uh, and hopefully gives you a little bit more confidence uh, in some of the advice that I'm giving you. 
Uh, I've also been asked quite a bit about, uh, you know, they see me wearing haste clothing. Um, long and short of it, they don't want to give too much away. But yes, it's a, it's a project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, and it will all be revealed in, in due time. But I don't want to ruin the surprise for you. But, uh, you know, big things coming in the future. And um, hopefully you guys will want to get involved with that. So, um, as always, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for listening. Um, it'd be good if we can get a few more subscribers and, and, uh, and share, share these videos around with your friends and family. And uh, please feel free, as always, if you've got any questions, uh, fire them across. More than happy to answer. So um, stay healthy, keep training, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.